So now let's look at those more dynamic features which involve stepping through your code or setting breakpoints. We already looked at basic breakpoint features in the first video on debugger fundamentals. So now let's dig a little deeper. There's a few ways we can get to the advanced options, but perhaps the most direct is to right click an existing breakpoint. But we can get some of the more common options straight away. First, we can make our breakpoints conditional by adding Boolean expressions. These work as you would expect for primitive values, but just like we've evaluated expression, you can include more complex code that's called a runtime here, including operators and methods. Going back in, we can also disable and re-enable our breakpoints. This allows us to set them up, perhaps with some more involved configuration, as we'll see, but keep them disabled for now without having to remove them and set them up again from scratch. If that seems generally useful, you may want to make it more accessible by going into the settings for the debugger and setting this option. So a left click disables instead of removing. You can then still remove the breakpoint by dragging it off into the editor. The next option is a bit curious at first sight, suspend execution. Now this is what puts the break in breakpoint. So when set, which is the default of course, then execution suspends when the breakpoint is hit. Now that's simple enough, but when is it useful to not suspend? Bearing in mind, we already have the option to disable it entirely, but we'll get some answers if we click on it. Once disabled, more options appear. The first section is about logging messages. If you just want to recall that a certain line of code has been passed, the simple breakpoint hit message may be enough in some cases. This alone may save you from so-called printf debugging which would usually require a recompile. As you can see, it also logs the file and line number, but you can also log a stack trace. And perhaps most usefully, evaluate an expression and log that. Just like we've evaluated expression or the condition expressions earlier, We've got the full power of GDB and LLDB expression evaluation here, so we can make function and method calls. So that's quite a lot of feedback we can extract without actually stopping our code or recompiling. But wait, there's more. We can also set a breakpoint to fire only once with the remove once hit option. Or, and this is my favorite, have it be disabled until some other breakpoint including an exception breakpoint, is hit first. This allows you to have your breakpoint be dependent on the path taken through your code. Now, if you've ever done this manually by setting up one breakpoint, and then only when that's hit, set another one somewhere else, you'll know that well, while that works okay, if you're just doing it once or twice, it does get very tedious, you have to do it a lot. So now you can set your waypoints as non-suspending breakpoints, and then set those as dependencies in the breakpoint that you're actually interested in. So lots of powerful ways to work with breakpoints here. But before we finish with the view breakpoints dialog, let's look again at exception breakpoints. We can get to them from our pop-up dialog by clicking the more link, or from view breakpoints from the sidebar of the debug tool window, or from the run menu, or of course, the shortcut shown there. Now this is the full breakpoints configuration center, where we see all the breakpoints that have been set up, including any that are disabled, as well as exception breakpoints, as we started looking at in the first video, and even breakpoints for other language support engines you may have included via plugins. So we took that initial look in the first video, where we just looked at the when thrown and when caught options, but by now we've covered most of the other options as well. But it's useful to note that all of the same options are available here, Anything we haven't looked at is the Objective-C only option. Now, in case you are using Objective-C, you can probably guess what that does anyway, so we're not going to discuss that further here, just be aware it's there. Now, there's actually another type of breakpoint that CLine supports, and that's the watch point. The breakpoints we've looked at so far fire when a particular line is hit. And while we've been able to refine that using data such as the conditional or dependent breakpoints, watch points let you break when data is read from or written to, 
wherever that is. This is really useful when you don't know where something happens, just the effect of it. So to find out where this variable changes, let's set a watch point on it. We can do this by opening an inspector, then navigating until we can see a memory location into it. Here we can add a watch point, and we get some further options. We can break when the memory is read from, written to, or either. We also have most of the other options common to all breakpoints we've looked at, but we just want to suspend when written to. So let's accept that and continue on. And we break in some assembly here. Looking at the stack frames, we can see we're in Strucopy. Going up the stack to our code, we can see the call to Strucopy here. And we found our culprit. So far, we've been looking at ways of stopping execution. Of course, in the first video, we also looked at the various stepping options that move through the code along its natural path. But it's also possible to change the control flow and set the execution point directly. The arrow icon in the gutter represents the current execution point when suspended. We can simply drag it to where we want to jump to. That can be forwards as well as backwards, at least within the same function. As well as dragging the icon, you can also use the menu option. As I recall this, this is a new feature. There's no keyboard shortcut assigned by default, but you can easily add one using find action. Also, as a new feature, there are some known issues and limitations that may no longer apply by the time you watch this, so do check the docs if you're unsure about anything more complicated. Either way, you can get into dangerous situations with this feature, such as skipping initializations, so do be careful. And that's where we break for now. We looked at breakpoints that don't break, conditional and dependent breakpoints, watch points, and setting the execution pointer. Watch out for the next video, where we look at some low-level GDB and LLDB features, and then look beyond the current process.